So dude here finally snaps, gets up, untucks. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another installment of Top Tier Dietary Choices. Today we have a, another installment in the series of Eating 8. And today we're eating 8 spicy chicken wraps from Wendy's. And I am confident in this one. I do believe I can do it. I believe I can smash it. As history would have it in these Eat 8 videos, I have always kind of told a story. So today I'll also be sharing a story of at least probably one of my top 10 sketchiest, scariest moments in my life. So before we do anything more, we must pour. We have our ice berg ready to go. And we're back with the doctor, of course. Doctor's in the building. We must make a fizz and do what it does, what it do. That was an aggressive first uh, first pour there, so it'll probably take a little while to get that initial aggression settled. Fizz is just so aggressive, you know? I'm very, very hungry. I'm very excited to eat these. I asked the good people of Wendy's to add extra lettuce and tomato. because they didn't give an option to add more tomato. So in the special instructions, you know, when you leave, you know, little things for the delivery driver to, for when they pull up, like call my phone or I'll meet you downstairs or whatever it is in that area. I just said, can you please, and thank you, add tomatoes and some extra lettuce. So it seems like they've done that. I do see the tomatoes in here. So Shout out to the people of Wendy's or the employee, whoever did that. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, the love and not charging me. Okay? Maybe that's a little skip the dishes hack. Just put it in the special instructions. That way they have no way to charge you. That one you charge to the game. You got played a little bit there, Wendy's. Okay, you guys know I'm pulling up with a bowl of ranch of course and i also got some hot sauce here as well because i don't know well are these going to be spicy spicy we'll have to see spicy chicken isn't usually that spicy so i had to roll back the rim to win here just to make sure you guys see what's going on uh, if you don't know what roll back the rim is it's actually a thing in canada it's it's tim hortons it's coffee you roll the rim of the cup and you, you're you supposed to win like an SUV or something cool or donuts for life. But all you really ever win is like a small coffee or something to that effect. So you already know that I'm going to go aggressive ranch, excessive ranch. And let's just start it off right with a crazy type bite. Right into the belly of the beast. Mm. Forgot a napkin, of course. Just perfect. So good. I love the combo of lettuce, tomato, cheese, and breaded chicken. You just really can't go wrong. With extra ranch. I gotta go on a napkin run. I'll be right back. And by napkin, I mean rag, and by rag, I mean cloth. Well, 
all clean now. I am ready to get further into this. So we're going to tell you a story today. A sketchy life tale. Definitely easily one of the scariest moments in my life. But I'm here to tell the tale by the grace of God or the powers that be. Because sometimes when I look back at my life and the shit I've got up to, it's a miracle I'm not dead. For real. So it's no secret. I've talked a lot about this on this channel. That I lived some pretty wild, wild party days. Living in Toronto. Also, being in the service industry server bartender life it's common there for you to work your evening shift and uh, make a bunch of money you get done your shift fairly late maybe one o'clock Your staff usually is young. You're around a lot of young people. What do young people do in a major city? Drink. Party. But because it's late at night and you get up done work, your nearest bar is only open for another hour, hour and a half. So you go there, you start pounding back some drinks. And once you're a few drinks deep, and then the bar closes, and you're just getting started, You have to find somewhere to continue the fun. And pretty much every night of the week, there's always a handful of places to do that. And those are called after hours. a very illegal semi-secret location where you go pay 20 bucks to get in and then you're in the CD underbelly of big city nightlife where a whole mixed bag of people come out to play And by play, I mean take part in degenerate behavior. Namely drinking and drugs, but also gambling. So I worked at this restaurant, me and this one dude We became a 
kind of degenerate homies. We both loved going to after hours, going out drinking. Spending all night in smoke-filled rooms with sketchy people. But he and I both loved playing Texas Hold'em poker. There was a few after hours that had tables. So if you're from Toronto and you're watching and, you know, you're in your 20s, 30s, you've partied and stuff, you'll know about what I'm talking about. Um, you might even know the place. It's I don't think it exists anymore. Uh, it did get shut down, I think, in my time. The cops were always kind of in and out. They were always kind of raiding it, shutting it down, then it would open back up. Um, it was called 56 Kensington, so it was in Kensington Market, and it's just this little, you go down this back lane, you knock on the door, Dude looks through the thing, lets you in, pay your 20 bucks, go down, and then you can gamble, play pool, smoke cigarettes, uh, drink, and do drugs, and hang out with a bunch of random people. Now, a lot of those places are filled. With just people from the service industry getting off work. Going to party, going to blow off steam, whatever. But by the very nature of the institution, there's also people there who are of that, you know, drug dealer-ish. Illegal crime st lifestyle. So anyways, me and my buddy go to, to this one in Kensington Market. We frequent it. We've been to it lots. We played poker in it lots. Easily one of the sketchiest after hours in the city, by far, bar none. The bouncers were always like very intense. Very scary dudes. And just a heads up, if you do find yourself in after hour situations, be afraid of the bouncers. Don't disrespect them. Because they're not bouncers. They're savages. They're part of a crime organization. They're not like a bouncer at a bar. They likely have a gun or knives or things like that. And they don't fuck around because there's no rules. It's like the wild, wild west when you go to an after hours. <clears throat> so rules, really. So him and I go this night and sit down at the poker table. Everything is as per usual, just a normal night, but there's these two dudes also there so we had a table of four of us playing and uh you know we're playing it's all good for a while and then along the way these two dudes that we don't know we're just playing poker with them. They start having... Uh, they don't need know each other as, as well. They start getting in, like, these... Very competitive, like... Miniature arguments... Over, like... You know, being sketchy with their hands and, like, fucking up and, like... Betting wrong or, like... Just a lot of weird little instances of... tension starting to happen and so like 
the dude was next to me, other dude, my buddy. So dude here is kind of being more the aggressor. This guy is kind of the one by me. Is just like arguing back, but this guy is kind of more the one that's taking it to places, like getting just way too intense. And we're trying to like work the situation, calm the situation. And eventually they get they get into a tiff, but this time it just escalates over like the hand went wrong and dude thinks that this dude like thinks that he won and like took the money and then the chips were all fucked up and just like it was like an error on his part by taking everything. So now the hands were all scrambled, the chips were all fucked, everything is bad. And that's obviously going to lead to lead to like tension of you know you don't you, you're, you're playing on my money right now. So dude here finally snaps, gets up, untucks from his waist and just fucking shoves the gun at this dude, but he's like beside me. So I got, I'm like just, I'm basically eye to eye with a gun. <laughs> this guy's drunk and high on cocaine and whatever else, like heated about money. He's mad at this dude though. Like I, like I, you know, I'm tripping, but I don't, you know, anything could happen. This guy could shove something. I could get like he could accidentally go and shove the gun comes my way, whatever. <clears throat> so, dude is heated at this guy. This guy is like, whoa, 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 whoa. My one buddy's like, what the fuck? Like he's like flipping out too. He's just everybody's trying to like just get it like calm down. We're like, whoa, bro, bro, we're chill, 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 chill. And then, just lucky, and not lucky enough, but, like, the bouncer, the savage, like, the dude that I'm telling you, like, to be afraid of, he just, without hesitation, like, came, like, came around back of the dude and just scooped him up, brought him to the floor, got, the, like, the gun away and shit, and then they, they just kind of, like, wrangled him up and took him elsewhere, like, into the dark, basically. Eventually, obviously, he got kicked out or some shit, but at first, they, like, took him down this, like, dark hallway, and we were just like, holy fuck, man, like, sitting there just, re like, just in shock, like, rattled, but also drunk, too, so it's like, when you're drunk, it's like, more, you just, like, accept the reality of it more, like, you're not as freaked out, you're definitely, like, you're tripping, but you're also just more like, Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> but it was terrifying. Just having it that close, just the fact that he was so just angry and fucked up. Drugs and substances. That's what was scaring me. Like. I don't know how this guy was going to react. You know. Maybe he does some dumb shit. I get caught up in it. Anyways. That dude disappeared. Gun dude disappeared for the rest of the night. And me and my buddy. Just stopped playing poker, but we still stayed. <laughs> Stupid. We stayed. We just went over and started playing pool. And continued, continued to just drink. until the wee hours of the morning or all hours of the morning. Sometimes I would leave that place at 11 a.m. Some days. Disgusting. Like, so gross. 
no worse feeling. But those days were over for me. I did it for some years. I led that lifestyle, but eventually I just cooled my jets on all that. Like I just, I was like, I can't, this can't keep doing this life. This life leads to like death pretty much. So I eventually smartened up and just like stopped going to those places. Like obviously still like have some drinks with friends after work and stuff and, and party and stuff, but just stopped going to those like seedy after hours, just dark, dingy, gross type places. Um, yeah and then like clearly that's just like no longer a thing in my life so and i don't ever really want to ever go back to one of those places to be honest with you so i've had my fair share of my, my 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 fill if you will and also i fall short i've had my fill here six point six wraps i was able to finish but i've hit the wall i am full almost seven defeated by eight again I can't believe it I cannot believe I got defeated by eight wraps these are bigger than I thought though to be honest I'm used to like a snack wrap being even a smaller tortilla like this is like a fa fairly large tortilla actually so but anyways I got beat straight up I got beat Take a lesson from me. Don't spend your time in after hours. Just like don't waste your life there doing that. It's just years of my life. There's just so stupid. But there are some good times too. But you know what I mean. It is what it is. Life. Hope you enjoyed that one. Till the next one. Eat good. Live well. Stay true.